We showed you a bright lighted picture of this last week, last time, but here's the mormoninfo.org and josephlide.com. Let's go back and finish your schooling, and then you meet your dear wife. How, what, what takes you to Texas to meet? Uh, is that where you met Tara? Yeah, it was actually at Dallas Theological Seminary. My brother... My was she going there? Or? No, my youngest brother was going there. He was finishing up his master's in theology there. And I had started a correspondence with Tara, my now wife. How did you meet her? Uh, I, well, we started corresponding with each other. I told her that I was coming out to see my brother graduate, and if she'd like to get together, there's a graduation barbecue <laughs> where she and her daughter, Maddie, could come and meet me, and not just me, but most of my whole family. Did somebody too. introduce the two of you, or I'm not, I guess uh, I'm filling yeah, in the gap okay. there. <laughs> so uh, a year before, in 2005, I came out to visit my brother, mm -hmm. and he was doing kids' gymnastics, and the, a church hired him to pretty much babysit the kids with gymnastic type stuff, while yeah. the uh, uh, young adults and with kids would have their get together. So. My brother wanted me to go out and advertise for him, so I met this one couple that uh, were friends with Tara. Oh, okay. And as a matter of fact, the gal, Becca Self, had recently, about three years prior to that, actually led Tara to the Lord. From out Tara, of Mormonism. Tara, we've interviewed Tara yes, before. I apologize, here. I didn't look up the episode number. I, do you happen to know no, that? I oh, don't know it. But, but look up Tara. She's such a sweetheart, and uh, I just love her to pieces. And so that's how you met. So her. yeah, he, Becca told Tara, "Hey, I met this guy. He does evangelism to Mormons, and and she's now Christian. And she's Christian, and you might be interested in his website, MormonInfo.org." And so she started looking it up and felt kind of guilty even after three years of being a Christian for looking at something this, anti -Mormon, Yes, yeah, so to I know. Speak, but, but she really had a desire to lead her family to the Lord. And so because of that, she started this correspondence with me. Hmm. And so when we met, it, had, it was nothing of a romantic interest. Wow. But uh, we uh, met, and sure enough, that's what happened. I mean, the sparks just flew, and immediately that weekend, we started dating and started talking to each other 24 hours a day. I was living in California. I had moved back from Utah because I was doing my doctorate at the U in philosophy, and I needed to get away from all this Mormon ministry type stuff. And so I went to go live with my folks for a little while, but... I still couldn't get away from <laughs> Mormon ministry type stuff. Uh, talked to, started talking to Tara, and I thought, man, I just I got to move out to Dallas and date yeah. this woman. And uh, so that was summer of 2006. We got married the next year, 2007. Mm -hmm. And God's just started opening up all these doors to come back up to Utah. And Tara she, was originally... She said she wasn't too thrilled about no, that. No, she huh? wasn't. <laughs> yeah, she, I mean, her experience with Utah was Utah County. Her mom used to teach at BYU, was the, in charge of the Daily Universe there. Oh, wow. And then she also finished high school up in Brigham City. And so that was her experience of Utah. It was highly concentrated Mormon areas that are 95% white, you know. Right. Whereas in Dallas, it was it's like... A nice mix of people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so uh, she wasn't very excited about coming back up to Utah, but I explained to her that Salt Lake's a little different. And so uh, God started opening up one door after another to make it very Fun. obvious that he wanted us back up to Utah and we moved back up here in 2009 so we've wow. been living in West Jordan now for 10 years okay yeah well 
Rob, you have such a, a busy life with, with this outreach to Mormons. And so let's talk about, I guess, a few of those things, if you're up for that. Yeah, sure. Uh, you hold a weekly or a monthly uh, mm -hmm. ex-Mormon meetup. Mm -hmm. you, we think maybe you've done over 100 of those. <laughs> yeah, probably around. Between here and well, Dallas. Yeah, we some. used to do it in Dallas. Uh, yeah. we, in Dallas, we would just get together for meals and tell our stories to each other about Mormon and talk anything about Mormonism. Yeah. But in Utah, you've got so many ex-Mormons to pull from right. that we started incorporating testimonies into yeah. our meetings. And so... And your focus, too, is the same as mine, is that we're not, yeah. not the bitter Mormon and the Mormon that's just become agnostic or atheist, but those that have actually come to the Lord, yeah. right? come to Jesus. Yeah, and, that's exactly yeah. what we're trying to do. And is, we've given our, Carla and I have given our testimonies there, and it was a wonderful experience. We've been to many of them over the years. and it's Yeah, just you've got one, the highest viewed video on there. Do we really? Oh, yeah. Well, well we just really 000. appreciate the, the, that you do that, and I know a lot of people mm -hmm. have been thrilled to share their stories, and uh, you've done just a wonderful work there. Yeah, it's yeah. it's been a neat ministry. How do people see those or view those? What's they go the to meetthexmormons.org, the and I've got I've got basically all the videos that we've done for the last ten years on that site. Yeah, some and, wonderful people. And then we have you can sign up on the bottom right to follow this site. And then you get the updates of my address, where to, we're going to meet, and what or other events that we get together. Yeah. And somebody might come and do a lecture somewhere, and we'll go hear that or something of that sort. But uh, I also put out the details of the next, I call them, f feast and testimony times. <laughs> As opposed to fast and testimony. Yeah, right. And so we put on the main course and we invite people to sign up for what they want to bring, an appetizer, yeah. side dish, or a dessert. Mm -hmm. And then we sit around from at 5 o'clock for about an hour and a half, two hours, and talk and get to know each other, share what's going on in each other's lives. Yeah. And then after that, somebody will share how they got out of Mormonism and gave their life to Christ. Yeah, it's a wonderful support. It's a, a great support, and I know a lot of people that have come in there and have really felt the love that you have for the Mormon people and, and a, just a fellowship. I yeah, think that's great. That's what it is. The other thing that you do I know a lot of is uh, the Thursday afternoons or Thursday evenings at Temple Square. Or you, do you I used to I used do to those do those, those yeah. but uh, I, I've been focusing on other things. <laughs> Well, that other thing includes going to temple open houses. Temple open how houses. Many, yeah, how many I've, of those do you I've, think you've I've been probably to? been through around 25 temples. And we're talking about, tell us a few of the locations. Well, uh, Rome. I know Rome, <laughs> I was at the beginning of this year. Yeah. We also went to the Oakland temple opening in May. In April, went to back to back Memphis and then Oklahoma City. Wow. And um, now these are temples that have been built and people are allowed, the public's allowed to go in and go through them They're either until new. they've been prayed over and then they are yeah. closed to, to the public. That's right. But they'll open it up and it depends on how many Mormons are in the area for how long they're going to leave it open for. Oh, the open In house. Oakland, it was about a month, maybe around a month in... Um, in Oklahoma, it was only like a, about a week. Really? So, yeah. So it kind of depends on what the, who they think the traffic will be right. and all that. Right. So what but have you noticed over the years, the changes that you've had to deal with and things that they, I mean, are you earmarked? Do they know who you are? I guess the church. <laughs> well, I mean, funny like, story for you. I, I went to Philadelphia for their temple opening back uh, several, several years ago. And uh, I had to, had to go to the bathroom, and if you know anything about Philadelphia, it's very tough to find a bathroom <laughs> around there. And I'd say, ah. And so this I, is in an uprise too, isn't it? Isn't the temple in a high-rise situation, or is it out there? No, as it's, a normal temple. It's out in the middle oh, middle of the city okay. as a normal temple. Maybe I'm thinking of somewhere else. New York, anyway, maybe. Yeah, right. But uh, anyway, so I started looking around for a bathroom. I couldn't find <laughs> a bathroom. I said, well, heck, I, I know that in like other temple areas. If I put all my stuff away, my literature and stuff, I hand out these, Just act like these the public. temple guides, you know, I, if oh, I don't take yeah. this in, 
you know, so and pass is... that out. If I leave my sign in my car, then maybe I can go use their bathroom, right? So I yeah. go in and use their bathroom. I come out, and this security guy says, hey, Rob, he knows, he knows my name. your name. So I want to show you something in the back room here. And facetiously, I say, what is it, the Book of Mormon? You want to read that to me? <laughs> and he said, no, I got something else. So he goes back in there. I immediately turn when I enter the room, and here, I kid you not, there's this poster board, and it's got different pictures of guys that are kind of like a most wanted. And I'm oh. all the way up top, <laughs> look out for this guy. Uh, Mike Norton was on there, Aaron Schaff Olivoff was on there, uh, some other guys, that these are... So they're very aware of... Uh, yeah, yeah, but I mean, I still, I mean, we're, I'm Were you a little from freaked out? Yeah, I still. I mean, this is the other side of the country, and they've yeah. gotcha. pulled my picture from my Courageous Christians United website yeah. and put it on this poster board. I was so shocked about this. I said, I, can I take a picture of this? And the guy immediately says no and turns the poster board around. But uh, he told me, look, you cannot come on our property ever again. So we're just telling you and and that's it so even it was, though visitors are welcome at least at, yeah at the Temple Open House. right just not uh and what else the, do you run into like uh, you have to be on the public uh, public sidewalk yeah you have to be on the sidewalk or, sure yeah i mean we you, you're not paid, allowed to be on the ground no I, I i respect that sure. that's their property yeah. but nonetheless we still have uh problems with what exactly is their property and, and what's, what's public? public property. Yeah. I mean, I, I wouldn't, this doesn't happen all the time, but it happens enough times to make it kind of irritating. Yeah. And uh, I mean, we've had this with Jim Catlin up at Brigham City Temple opening until the very last week, uh, ACLU was, was fighting the Mormon church to get them to open up a piece of property that, you where they stand were, on. that we could stand on where they were dropping bus loads off and we wanted to pass our tracks out to them mm. as they were getting in and out of the bus. And, and, and so we had that property. I had the problem in Oklahoma City back in April where I was standing on the grass area right off the curb and they said, this is their property. I could not stand there. And so I had to talk to the county assessor and find mm -hmm. out where the public easement is because surely there's got to be a public easement. I've got these videos. So <laughs> I take these videos. I put the video right in the faces of these LDS you. security guys. Yeah. And I just let them talk because it just shows the, the strong arm tactics that they try to pull that you would expect from cults, yeah. you know, that they want to keep control on their members and, and not get any kind of information, as much information out as possible. They don't want <laughs> their members uh, having. So they try to push us off as far away as, as, as we can. So I have these games that I play with these and I, I'm getting kind of used to it yeah. now after, after all this. Well, time. one thing that uh, uh, Rob is also involved in or was involved in is uh, he had a chapter in this book, mm -hmm. Sharing the Good News with Mormons. And the chapter 20 is yours, and it talks about your website. And it kind of ties in mm -hmm. with what you were just talking about. But one of the things you mentioned is the increase. And if, if you don't think this kind of uh, advertising is effective, he says that uh, between October 12th and 18th of 2016, and this was uh, for Connecticut, I yes, believe, Connecticut there were three Hartford. visits to his website. And during the next two or three days after you had been there, the open house, there were 1,393 <laughs> visits to your website. A little different. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's, that's encouraging to you. And you yeah. probably see that everywhere you go, right? Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and what are the responses? What uh, I know you've had some real positive ones that people are thank you later. That sure, say that sure. I mean, I here I'll give you one. This is from a gal named Christina. I got this in April 2013. She says, I understand you're the guy behind 
josephlide.com. <laughs> I saw a banner years ago at the Orange County Temple opening. Anyway, I looked it up at the time and put it on my shelf. <laughs> Recently, my shelf finally came tumbling down. Thanks for planting the seeds of truth. Isn't that now, something? Get, now get this. That Orange County Temple opening? Yeah. 2005. Okay? She sent this to me 2013. Eight years later. Eight years later. But See, she didn't forget but Joseph You don't Lied. forget josephlide.com. Especially, especially when it's the lighted the light. sign. Yeah, I didn't have the lighted sign back then. Check, but check she last saw episode that. for that. Yeah. yeah. But she saw that, and it's not easily forgotten. Yeah. So it's filed away, and when the time is right, when some plant, some water, as Corinthians says, yeah. God brings the increase. That's all you increase. hope for, isn't it? And so certain seeds take longer to germinate than other seeds. Yeah. So certain fruit trees take <laughs> longer to produce fruit than other fruit trees. You know, I know that well. Is and But God can use those. And I think any of yes. us that have come to the Lord, I think we can look back and see that his hand in kind of moving us through whatever process that was. Yeah. And Exactly. And encouraging us. Yeah, You've got so. a couple other little quotes in here. One is, Rob, this is awkward to say, but I just mm -hmm. wanted to thank you for your evangelizing efforts. Don't ever give up on or get discouraged. After all, it was a picture of you <laughs> holding the sign josephlight.com that started my search, though I really just wanted to know why you were so angry with the Mormons. <laughs> yeah, that's the initial appearance. Yeah. Right? But you I... really have a love for Mormons. Exactly. Yeah. And and that's developed over the years. It sounds yes. like you, you, initially you were just kind of in a, a one-upmanship, or I, I've got something that you don't kind of a thing. Yeah. And and yet you, do you appreciate where we're coming from? We Mormons are coming from more, more now. Oh, I mean, absolutely! Yeah, the sure. struggle that we have because yeah. when we grow up into it, and we're pioneer heritage, and we have this. We're following our fathers, you know, the pioneers, and we're being dutiful to, to what we've been told and taught. It's very, it's discouraging. Well, it's not discouraging. It's, um, we're blinded. Yeah. Yeah, we just don't know. We yeah, don't know I mean, I, I sympathize with that even more since I'm married into a Mormon family. Right. My in-laws are, are Mormon. And they're still active. And, yes, yeah. very much so. As a matter of fact, I ran into my mother-in-law outside the Oklahoma City Temple opening, and I had no idea <laughs> she was there. <laughs> she was going to be there. She lives two and a half hours away. Oh my! And but I she was coming to it. And... Yeah, because I thought, well, she comes every month to do her temple work. Why oh. would she come for an open house? So you're and right. She, I just get out there, and I turn around. And here's my mother-in-law. What she, what'd she say? <laughs> she just said, "I just wanted to say hi." And I kid you not, as soon as that happened, my phone rang. It was Tara. And so I answered the phone. I said, Tara, I, I'm talking to this nice Mormon woman. You've got to say hi to her. <laughs> oh, you had to. And she was like, no, I don't want to talk to a Mormon. i got to talk to you. And so I gave it to her. And said, oh, yeah, it was crazy. Anyway, it's a funny oh, story. Funny. It's happened before at the Manti pageant, too. She came up behind me and was tugging on my shirt while I was preaching. And I just was kind of tuning Everybody this person else, out. Yeah. yeah, I wanted to get my message out. I didn't want to be distracted. And I just let this go for about a minute or so. Finally turned around. It's my mother-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> but I love my mother-in-law. I love my in-laws and sure. uh, a lot of them. Tara's... Uh, meet her, all her sisters have left, not officially, but have none of them would claim to be LDS oh, at yeah. this point. But mm -hmm. but still, every the extended family is is very much LDS, mm -hmm. and I have a real burden for them. I pray for them every day, and I pray for other Mormons that I've met outside of these temple openings or at outside Temple Square that I meet and I put them down on my prayer list and I continue to pray for these people. Well, I don't, I don't know. There's such a freedom and such a liberty that comes. The burden has come off of our shoulders when we accept Jesus and what he did for us, realizing that we couldn't do it for ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, 
you never really experienced that little transition, I guess. You always had Jesus, and you, you've you just been able to, that must be so joyful to have had him as a, as a companion and as a friend all these years, and yeah, he, it's so different well, for, and, and, I, I, and yet Mormons believe that they believe in Jesus. Right. But yeah. they believe in the Savior and the Redeemer and right. his, the elder brother. and They don't know Jesus. They don't know Jesus. They, they have what Jesus said in Matthew 24, 24, is a false Christ. And if they don't have a false Christ, I really don't know who does. <laughs> because their Jesus is a burdensome Jesus. He's the elder brother of Lucifer. He's a created being. He's a created being. He is not the creator of all things outside his own being. Even though that's what John tells us. They devalue Jesus to make him their elder brother in a pre-earth life. And if they're worthy enough and do break their back and do all these commandments that Jesus has nothing whatsoever to do about, about abstaining from drinking coffee (laughs) or tea, or uh, you know, uh, giving ten uh, percent of your income. If you don't do these things, you can't have a temple recommend so that you can go to the highest heaven and be in the presence of the Father in the celestial kingdom, and become a god. And if you're <laughs> that, if you enter into the celestial law, the gospel law, and do everything the Mormon Church requires of you, then you can reach exaltation or eternal life and be your own God and populate these worlds to where your own spirit children will be worshiping, guess who? You. You, as opposed to the God of this world. And as a Christian... That's just... That is just... Can I say blasphemous? Yeah, right. It is because the God of the Bible knows of no other God beside Him. In Isaiah forty-four verse eight, Isaiah forty-three verse ten, I am the first, I am the last. Beside me there is, there no, is God. no other. Isaiah forty-four twenty-four, I am Jehovah. I make all things. I stretch forth the heavens alone. I spread about the earth by myself which is completely contrary to the Mormon temple ceremony in which Elohim is sending out another god, Jehovah, with another, Michael, to organize and form the heavens and the earth, which is exactly what Abraham says, that the gods organized and formed the heavens and the earth throughout Abraham chapters 4 and 5. And the Pearl of Great Price, yeah. There is no good reason to believe that. There is every good reason to believe the Bible, that God has promised, that Jesus himself said that Scripture would not be broken. Scripture cannot be broken in John 10, 35. That heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. We have so many good reasons to believe God's word, the Bible, which is given to us as a light to keep us from all these false prophets that are going to try to take us away from the only true God, as John chapter 17 verse 3 says. One that really struck me was that God does not dwell in temples made with hands. hands. And I'm sitting there thinking how many Mormons have believed and really truly believe that Jesus walks the halls of the temple. Yeah, I mean, it's... That's common kind of knowledge. Well, we're just about out of time again, but there's a couple of things I wanted. You mentioned your uh, Courageous Christians United. Mm-hmm. And, yes, uh, I'm the president of that president organization. You're president of that, mm-hmm. and uh, people are able to donate to that yes. and uh, contribute because of your travels and all the open mm-hmm. houses that you try to get to. Um, this is full-time for you, right? Yeah, so. Yeah. So uh, yes, any support that way is is, and I did I did forgot to mention that we were going to put up different little pictures throughout this this episode. Mm-hmm. So I hope uh, I think that that's been being done. Um, the pageants, uh, yeah, they're closing out pageants. I know that church not does, all of them. They're keeping the Mesa pageant for the time for being. The, the Easter Nauvoo. one, the Easter one. Yeah, the, the Easter, Easter one, the Navu, and the one that happens every so often in England. They're keeping oh, those. But, but the, the big one in New York, Camorra. Yes, next year will be the Manti. last year for that. Manti, Do you see a, 
I wondered if it was a security issue. Do you see another reason that they would be canceling those out? Uh, if it was a security issue, General Conference would have closed down a long time well, ago. That's, that's a good point. <laughs> um, good I don't think it has anything whatsoever to do with security. You think it has issue. to do with evangelizing? Yes, do I do. Really? When I know they actually bought the road. Yes, when you buy the by road, Manto, yes. Man time. They kept trying to push us out, and putting signs up on their lawn all over, no proselytizing or evangelizing allowed. They wouldn't even let us use the bathrooms at one year because they were so mad the about porta us. The porta potties. <laughs> because they were so mad about the presentation we did with Joseph Smith's 34 wives. That they, you had the women yeah, out there all that dressed they, in. They, one year they wouldn't let us use the bathrooms. They were so mad. I also heard from a buddy of mine, Kevin Deegan, who does evangelism all over the United States, not just for Mormons. But he heard from a friend of his in upstate New York that uh, is of, he's a Mormon of some repute, he says, that the word came from Dolan Oaks, that the reason that they're getting rid of it is because of us evangelists, that mm. they are getting sick and tired of all the headaches that we're creating for them. And so I have to believe from my... Maybe some of this seed planting huh, or something. Yeah, yeah, I think that they're, they've just kind of had enough of it. So that ought to be an encouragement to the rest of us Christians to start focusing our energies elsewhere, like General Conference, Nauvoo pageant, Easter uh, pa and pageant in Mesa. If we get enough Christians at these places, maybe the public propaganda that's going out is going to be shut down like it is here in Utah with the Manti pageant and Hill Cumora. Who knows? Well, you know, it, it used to bother me when I was a good Mormon to, to see this kind of stuff. You know, sure. it, 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 yep. it, but, but I never forgot it either. Mm -hmm. I was aware of it. Um, but it's hard for people to understand that you have such a desire to share this good news. Yeah. I mean, it's on your heart. That's what God has called you to do, mm -hmm. you feel. Mm -hmm. um, any kind of last words or last thoughts that you care to share? And Well, yeah, I understand that <laughs> on the surface of things, it looks very offensive and uh, I just have some axe to grind against Mormons. And that is, not that's true. just not the case. No. And I mean, I understand if you're being woken up from your great sleep that you're having by somebody banging on your door, you got to get up, <laughs> you're going to be initially pretty upset, yeah. right? But when you come Make to find <laughs> out that you got a fire going on in your home, yeah. A proper response would be, "Thank you for what you're you, trying to and do." And you do get a lot of thank oh, yous I do. eventually. <laughs> I do. Yeah, yeah, I do. You had some other stuff. Did, was there anything there you wanted to make sure we shared? Uh... Oh, just certain testimonies of of people that have seen the website here or there and have been influenced to leave. I think one of the best best testimonies I I can read to you is from a gal named Belinda. And this was back in October 2004. She said, I saw you or a friend of yours recently near Temple Square with a sign that said josephlied.com. Kind of figured it was an anti-Mormon website, but looked anyway, going against the <laughs> counsel of the church, which encourages us not to read anything negative against the church. I now thank God I ignored the counsel of the church. It's as if I were wearing blinders my entire life and now I can see. Oh. I have spent the past week and a half reading everything I can get my hands on about the church. It's no wonder they don't want us to read that stuff. They don't want us to discover the truth. I don't know if it was you, but I'm sure it was someone you know at the very least that was holding that sign. As I type this, I have tears streaming down my face, tears of joy for discovering the truth about Mormonism and now getting to really know my Savior, and tears of gratitude for your work and for those like you that spread the truth. 
God bless you, sir, for all you do. You will never know how much you have blessed my life. I will now spend the rest of my life telling others still trapped in Mormonism about the truth in your sight. <laughs> that keeps That's me not, going. Yeah. All right? When That's I get stuff nice. like that. Yeah. And the websites here actually have a, a wonderful thing that you do, a differences between Mormonism and Christianity. Yes, yeah, on the homepage. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. really excellent. I like where that. people can hit the link yeah. and get it from the horse's mouth. Right, and they don't. It's not a someone's opinion. It's right. actual facts. And I've know. been complimented by Mormons on how <laughs> how, how good how, how good that is. Or? Yes, on how I really understand Mormonism. Yeah, on it. So, well, you've been yeah. at it for many years, and I, I speak. I, for one, thank you very well, thank much you. for all your service, and that's um, that's encouraging. Yeah, yeah. I, I just hope many more as they come to, as they search, that they come and find you. Thank so, you. thanks, Rob. Yeah, I appreciate you. you. Thanks. We'll see you next time.